Hello, welcome to Chandu.org. In this video, we're going to look at how to make a risk map in Excel. Risk maps or risk diagrams are very useful in the project management world or anywhere where you have to deal with risks. Let's say you got a bunch of risks and you just want to visualize how likely these risks are and what is the impact of those risks. That's when a risk map will be useful. I'll quickly demonstrate a risk map and then I'll show you how to construct this in Excel. Just keep in mind that to make it, you need to have either Excel 365 or uh, one of the newer versions of Excel like Excel 2019 or Excel 2016 but updated with the text join function. That's the must have. So if you do not have text join, then you are not able to make this. Uh, unfortunately, but you can still watch it and then hopefully you will be able to use it once you get uh, new functions available in your Excel. Over to the video. So here is our risk map. As you could see, it shows a bunch of risks. I'm just gonna quickly turn off headings and formula bar so we have some more space uh, to see everything. Uh, and uh, likelihood of risks are rated one to five and the impact is also one to five and various risks color coded to show. Uh, the green ones are probably in the kind of risks that are low likelihood or low impact. And then you have your medium level ones, uh, yellow ones and then the highly risky ones, the, the ones that need to be did, taken care of. These are randomly made ones, but uh, you could get an idea. So let's take a look at the actual input data. You could have a risk tracker like this. Uh, this is fairly common in project management world. So if you are working as a project or portfolio or a program manager, chances are you already have something like this. So you would have a risk ID in some sort of a description or a title about it an impact and likelihood on a scale of one to five, one being the lowest impact and five being highest impact. Uh, same goes for likelihood. You could also have a mitigation strategy and, uh, assigned to each of the risks. Uh, usually mitigation of the risk falls into one of the four, four categories, which is you accept the risk, you avoid the risk, or you transfer the risk to somewhere else. Altogether, you uh, reduce the risks. That those are the four, four different options right uh, and then uh, you could also have additional columns here for example who is the uh, stakeholder or the person responsible for managing that risk and you could add that as a column uh, now when it comes to risk maps usually this is how they look you could add some extra layers of information here but uh, this is by far the simplest one so the beauty of this risk map is it is all dynamic and uh, by that, what I mean is uh, you, it's not a static uh, risk map. Once you make something, you know, it changes. So these are randomly assigned impact and likelihood values here. And, uh, and as you could see, if I interact with the spreadsheet and if I go to somewhere and type something, those values will change and I get new risks there. So how is this working? The, the, the critical aspect of all of this is what I did is I first made a matrix of five by five. So we selected uh, five five rows by, uh, sorry, five rows by five columns like that. And then I, I added simple borders around it. I'm gonna just quickly change the border color here so you could actually see this, right? And then what I did is I, I selected uh, the, the bottom thing and put green color there. You could also apply conditional formatting, but this is uh, not necessary for uh, for static categorization like this. Uh, so that's what I did. I get that matrix look. And then when you adjust your column widths, they, you can make them nice and big. Uh, you would get a risk map basically. Right. But what what is the missing component of all of this is the value inside this cell need to be one of those risks, right? So here is my, uh, I'm just gonna quickly uh, uh, select everything and adjust the row height here uh, so that we could actually see everything. So let's say this is the, this side, uh, this vertical axis is the likelihood. So 
uh, for our impact what was it uh, it's it's likelihood so we could have five four three two one and then here is one two uh, we can just drag this sideways using autofill we will be able to get the numbers so now i want to get all the risks so list them here uh, that have one is an impact and one as a likelihood so this is likelihood that's impact so it's kind of like if I go here and apply a filter on one for here, one for there, uh, that's funding risk is one of those values that I would like to see. There could be other values here as well, like here is CEO resignation, that is another risk. So to get those, what we will do is, we will use text join like this. If you have text join, this is a new function introduced in Excel uh, 365, online Excel as well as uh, Excel 2016 that is on continuous upgrade path uh, something like that so you could uh, give text join and then you can specify a delimiter for example I want the values to be uh, comma separated uh, let me just change my keyboard here uh, comma separated and ignore empty should be true that means if there is an empty value just ignore it and the values are I want these four three values then what you get is all the three words there uh, you will get here as comma separated in one text value. So that's the beauty of text join. Now the text join, it may not look so co complicated, but this last bit can be a function itself that returns a, an array. So for example, I could say if uh, the impact is, let's select these numbers, right? If the impact is equal to four, uh, then only give me these values else give blank values right if I write something like this what this does is it checks this range looks for the impact where this is 4 and only those values will come up the other values will be blank so I'll get an array because in the text join we see delimiter is comma and that empty value should be ignored that's the true part uh, Excel will ignore those and it will only print these three I'm going to press control the this when you press enter it will not work because this is an array formula you need to press Control Shift Enter to get it work, uh, and then you will get this. You might think, oh, why there's only one value? This is because the random formula changed again, and now we have only one value count with policy change. Uh, if I press F9, uh, if I go to formulas and recalculate, uh, I'll get uh, different values. Like right now, there's two values. So government policy change, worker accidents. Those are the two risks that are four. So we could apply this logic to kind of do the whole thing. This is a risk tracker. So I have named this table as risks and I can use a uh, text join. And the delimiter is uh, rather than using comma, I wanted to use a bullet point. So I first went and, uh, to the symbols and then you could get the bullet point here. Uh, I've already used it, so that's why it's there. But if you go to normal text and scroll down to arrows or something, you will see a bullet point here. It's a geometric shape bullet point. So that's the bullet point that I copied. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, quickly copy that, uh, insert, close. So that's the bullet point. And then I'll, I can write my formula, uh, text join. So that's the delimiter. Uh, then we'll have a space there, true. And then if by risks likely sorry back is equal to one we can't do an add condition with with the video doing like array like this but you could just write nested ifs if risks uh, likelihood is equal to one then I want risks tight right in other cases, I just want blank spaces. So, okay, remember, you need to do this blank spaces thing twice, one for each of the formulas, uh, and then we will close the text join. And then we press, press Control Shift Enter. Uh, we will get something like this. Uh, this is because the delimiter will only appear if there is only multiple values. If there is only one value, then it will not appear. Uh, but if I uh, recalculate, uh, then we should be able to uh, see multiple values like this. So they're all uh, bullet points separated. How do we get these bullet points into a new line, right? Because this is good, but if you look at my risk map, everything appears in a new line. So this is where we, rather than using just as a bullet point, we will add uh, car code number 10, ampersand bullet point space. That means a new line, 
char is char tends stands for a new line character and then that's what it is so we'll get that uh, and then uh, if i recalculate a few times we will eventually have something like this so two values although there is a new line character it will not appear in new line once you wrap text then only it will appear in the new line so that's how excel works so that's the formula that i have used here uh, there is a little bit more than that uh, i'm going to uh, zoom here uh, you could see this uh, let's uh, let's see so text join char 10 and then the bullet point space true if risk likelihood is equal to c3 which is that column there dollar c3 and d dollar 8 is my row further down with the impact number so we are using such a mixed reference style to get the corresponding likelihood and impact values from the matrix and then return the title so those are the values that will show up there once those values are there all we have to do is uh, uh, show them in the matrix by applying word wrap everywhere and uh, because of the way we are doing this i have if you observed earlier you know the first word will not have a bullet point because the delimiter will only appear between each of the text join uh, result return value so if there are two values then the bullet point will appear in middle but not between the first one so that's why i have appending a bullet point at the start uh, so that means here in this cell there will be a bullet point even when there are no values we could uh, do a little more like a count if condition in the front but that gets too complicated so instead what i did is i applied conditional formatting and i said if the text length in the cell happens to be just three letters then hide it away so to do that we go to conditional formatting manage rules i've already added it so all we are doing is the length of that cell is less than four that means it's three letters or two or one uh, then just hide it uh, by applying the sorry i uh, should show the format here uh, by applying the format code with custom and then three semicolons that's the code to dis completely make text values or any values disappear from a cell they're there but you can't see them it, so the cell has a value but we can't see them on the screen so that's how you can make a risk map i hope you found uh, this particular technique useful please go to the, the description to see a sample file for this uh, download that and use it as a risk map for your project and if you would like to add more details like you know the person's name or uh, additional details feel free to do that you may need to adjust the column width to make sure that everything is displayed properly uh, it's not likely that you would be dealing with projects with hundreds of risks so chances are this is a matrix but it is usually sparsely populated so it's it's a good practice to uh, use something like this so that everything updates automatically please share your feedback and suggestions in the comment section so that i can help you uh, and uh, normally i say subscribe to my channel but i want to say don't subscribe to my channel <laughs> instead uh, share this video with your friends or colleagues and uh, and visit chendu.org to learn more thank you Bye bye